Thank you, Jesus. God, you are a good God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for all of your blessings, for your protection and blessings, Lord. We praise you this morning. The Prince of Peace, peace that passes understanding. Praise God. We just worship you today and bless your name in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. God bless all of you. Appreciate you being with us today online. Thank you, Suzanne, for leading us in worship. Great choice of music. Amen. I was touched and blessed. Praise God. God is good. Amen. Thank you, Mike, for being back there and flipping the dials and turning the knobs and all the stuff that you do. Praise God. We appreciate Mike and Suzanne so much for all the work that they put into these services and making it possible for us to be together. Amen. On Sundays. And we just appreciate it so much. And we appreciate all of you. And thank you for being with us. Amen. Thank you for your continued support. I'm just uh, really blessed by uh, the numbers of people that are that are continuing to support the church, even though we're not able to be together physically, and yet uh, God is doing some great things, and I believe He's setting us up for a tremendous breakthrough on the other side of this. That's just the way God works, amen, and uh, I'm just thankful to be a part of it. I'm glad to be here and to be a part of what God's going to be doing, amen, not only today, but in our futures as well, praise the Lord. It's exciting, it's an exciting time to live for God in spite of all the junk, amen. It's evidence that the enemy is freaking out, amen, because of where the church is headed, amen, for the next step in this uh, relationship that we have with the Lord and how we can impact this world, amen, for Jesus' sake. Praise the Lord. Amen. So again, thank you, everybody, for being here. We love you. But what about this crazy weather, man? I mean, this has been nuts. Sally said the other day, there's antelope flying from the sky. I said, it's reindeer. <laughs> reindeer, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're trying to figure out everybody's doing different things. You see it online and everywhere. People's coming up with, you know, inventive things and creative ways of doing things differently, you know, and all that. So I told Sally, here's the deal. I'm going to build a car out of spaghetti. She said, you can't build a car out of spaghetti. You should have seen her face when I drove past her. <laughs> Praise God. Okay, well, since we're on the... Focus for food here. What did the uh, what did the sushi say to the bee? Wasabi. 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 Praise the Lord. All right, you don't like that. What about what the duck said when she purchased her new lipstick? Put it on my bill. <laughs> Praise the Lord. There's some disturbing uh, news today from the zoo. Uh, some mammals, uh, aquatic mammals escaped. I mean, it was utter, utter chaos. <laughs> utter chaos, praise the Lord. Okay, well, you survived it. You're all doing great, praise the Lord. We're still here. We love you all. And, and again, we appreciate so much your support, not only with uh, being online with us here, which is a tremendous blessing, but also in uh, giving and taking care of the responsibilities of the church. And I just appreciate it so much, and we love you. And thank you for it, and may God richly bless you, amen, in every area of your life. Praise the Lord. So let's get to the Word of God this morning. Beautiful day today. Thank the Lord for it, amen. And uh, it looks like it's going to be really nice this week. Maybe a few drops of rain, but lots of sunshine and temperatures in the upper 60s, which is a great thing, unless you're Darlene and Mike, praise the, or excuse me, Dar, Darlene and Don. Yeah, well, Mike too, if he's watching, praise the Lord, but... Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be nice weather here, too, for a while, so praise the Lord. So let's go to the Word of God, and let's begin uh, with 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 16. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 16. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ? Praise the Lord. So who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians now, chapter 5 and verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Praise the Lord. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Praise God. Did you know that uh, as a believer, everything that you want to be you already are because of Christ. 
Amen. Now, I know that we all deal with issues, uh, behavior, you know, wrong attitudes sometimes, wrong beliefs sometimes. Amen. But before we start focusing on those external behaviors and, and flesh, you need to start seeing yourself as the person that you already are inside. Amen. Every belief is going to bring results in your life. Amen. I mean, if you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he died for your sins, amen, then you're going to be born again, amen, you're going to be saved, right? Ephesians chapter 1, 11 through 13, Ephesians 1, 11 through 13, so what you believe, amen, becomes reality, praise the Lord, if you believe it, it will come to pass, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and that he died for you, you're going to be saved, right? So look at this in Ephesians again. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Praise the Lord. And as a result of this, you receive an inheritance. Amen. An inheritance that is in and through your relationship with God by Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let's look at this. There's a couple of scriptures I want us to uh, pay close attention to. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7. Thank you, Lord. Proverbs 23 and verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. All right, Proverbs 4 and verse 23. Proverbs 4 and verse 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Praise the Lord. So here's what he's telling us. What we believe is so powerful... Amen. The devil loves to get us to believe wrongly or to believe outright lies. Anything but the truth. Amen. Half truths, a little bit here, a little bit there. Complete lies, whatever. Just so long as we don't operate in the truth. Amen. So we've got to consciously, intentionally line up our belief with God's word. Amen. The sad truth is religion itself has promoted wrong believing. Amen. By making God seem judgmental or making God seem angry instead of gracious and loving. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter 6, verse 45. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Because as a man thinketh, so is he. Because what you think is what you say, and what you say is what you get. Amen. Our words have such power. Amen. Because God has declared that. If we speak his word, we get the results that his word promise. Amen. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. An evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. Praise the Lord. So whatever you believe deep down inside is what you're going to experience in your life. Amen. By his stripes, you were healed, right? If you believe by his stripes, you were healed, you're healed. Amen. He became poor so that you could become rich. He was broken so that you can be whole. He gave up everything in the Godhead so that we could be a part of the Godhead. Praise the Lord. John 8 and verse 32. Thank the Lord. John 8, 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. That's the Holy Spirit working in us to lead us and to guide us into all truth. And along with the Word of God, He does this by challenging us to think bigger. Because wrong belief is unbelief. Amen? Unbelief is really just revealed by small-minded thinking. Amen? Thinking human thoughts. Only thinking what, uh, what you could do in the natural. Amen? Amen? That's small-minded thinking. Everywhere in the Word of God, God challenges people, and He challenges their thinking before He uses them. 
Praise the Lord. Let's look at this quickly in Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 23. And we'll just look at a couple of examples. The Bible is filled with this. I just uh, picked up on three that are probably uh, known to most all of us. But the Bible's filled with all of this. And he said, he gave Joshua, the son of Nun, a charge. And he said, be strong and of good courage. For thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land which I swear unto them, and I will be with thee. Now think about this in the context of it. Joshua was a, basically a, an assistant to Moses. And Moses could not get the people into the promised land. Now this is Moses. This is the guy that led them out of Egypt, trusting and believing in God. He gets them out of Egypt. He gets them across the Red Sea, gets them through the desert, but they, he can't get them into the promised land. Right? Now think about this. This is Joshua is the assistant. And he's now got to do what Moses couldn't do. Amen. He's got to be thinking outside the box. He can't be thinking of his own abilities, or he'd just throw up his hands and say, well, if Moses couldn't do it, how am I going to get this done? Amen. So he gave Joshua, and he said, be strong and of good courage, for you shall bring the children of Israel into the land which I swear unto them, and I will be with you. Praise the Lord. And so God had to change the way Joshua thought, because what God had for Joshua was way more than Joshua could believe for himself. Amen. And so he had to see through the eyes of God. Amen. He had to believe that he could see himself doing what God had declared. Amen. But with limited belief, that was difficult. Amen. He's going to now defeat the enemies that Moses couldn't defeat. He's going to do something that had never been done before. He's going to go into these, into these areas that are filled with giants. War, warring type uh, tribes and, and peoples, amen. And these are people that just came out of slavery. They're not really trained for warfare. They don't really have a, the gifting for all of that. But God is telling him, be strong and of good courage. We're going to take this land if you will believe what I'm saying about you. Praise the Lord. So that's just exa and one example. Let's look at Judges chapter 6, verses 11 and 12. Because we're faced with things today, church, and you know this. We're all, I don't have to really go into detail about it. I don't even really want to. But the fact is, we're faced with things that are, look bigger than us in the natural. We're faced with situations and circumstances that are intimidating. Amen. But God is saying, look, you're more than able to overcome anything that comes against you. Praise the Lord. And he's trying to get us to see ourselves the way he sees us instead of the way we see ourselves. Amen. We are more than conquerors. Praise the Lord. There's, all, there's nothing that can be stopped from us. Amen. If we will believe. And so this is what God does with all of his people, and he's doing the same thing with us today. He's trying to get us to think big. Think bigger than you normally think. Don't think about yourself, your flesh, but think about what you can do in Christ, what you can do by the power of God. So there came an angel of the Lord, and he sat under an oak, which was an Oprah, that pertaining unto Joash, the Abizite, and his son Gideon, threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. So Gideon, he's threshing wheat, but he's doing it, Amen. Hiding in a wine press where they can't see him because he's scared to death of these people. Amen. And so he's trying to eke out a little bit of a living here to get some food on the table and, and make a few bucks maybe by selling some of it. But he's got to hide to do it because he's scared to death. Amen. And the angel of the Lord appears to this guy. And he says to him, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Now, if that doesn't make you want to slap your granny. I mean, I mean, come on, this guy is hiding. He's, a, he's, he's afraid. He's a coward. Amen. And God tells him, here's how I see you, a mighty man of valor. I mean, it doesn't make sense in the natural, but what God says is true if we will believe it, if we will act on it. Amen. And so God says, a uh, uh, mighty man of valor. And uh, he says, who, me? He said, you know, is there somebody behind hiding? Yep, you. God saw Gideon as this great man, and he wanted Gideon to see himself that way too. But he has to do it through God. Praise the Lord. So that Gideon would believe victory was an accomplished fact. Not something he was going to have to do, just something he was going to have to stand in faith for. Amen. And God would bring it to pass. Amen. Using him. Praise the Lord. Now think about this. Here's another example. And I think it's a great example. Esther was a beautiful woman. No doubt about it. She, she was beautiful. And so she gets this thought. This idea comes to her. Amen. That could change her life. 
I can marry the king. He's going to have a beauty contest, and I'm as good looking as any of these women. I got a shot at this. I could stop being a slave. I could become the queen. Amen? And so she gets this crazy idea, but then she has another thought. The beauty I inherited wasn't just so I could be a comfortable queen, kick back and enjoy the, the benefits of being a queen. And she's thinking, maybe, maybe I was created for a much greater purpose. God recreated us with gifts and with inheritance. Amen. And he challenges us to think and believe and act big. Praise the Lord. Because we were created for a time such as this. We're not here by accident. These things aren't happening by accident. We're here for a purpose. God has placed us here and placed in us gifts and abilities, amen, so that we can come overcome every lie and attack of the enemy. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Let's look at uh, John chapter 10, verse 10. Thank you, Jesus. I'm talking to some Esthers. I'm talking to some Gideons. I'm talking to some Joshuas. I'm telling you, you look at those things and say, oh, man, what great and mighty men and women of valor. The truth is they were just exactly like you are. They just believed God. And that changed everything. Praise the Lord. The thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus said, I'm come that we might have life. Not just life, not just existence, but we would have it more abundantly. A life unlike any natural life that people have understood. Amen. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us or enables us. Makes it possible for us to do these things. Amen. Let's look at John chapter 1 and verse 12. John 1 and verse 12. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I, I hope you realize I'm preaching to me. I'm going through everything everybody else is going through. I want to see my grandbabies. I want to spend time with people. I want to interact. I'm, I'm tired of shouting across the, 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 you know, the backyard to say hi and not be able to hug. And, and I, look, I get it. There are some parameters we need to follow just out of common sense. But this is not going to determine us. This is not going to define us. We have to live beyond this. We have to think. And I'm not talking here this morning about being goofy and weird. I'm talking about just simply walking in the truth of who we are. We don't have to be spooky. We can be exactly the person we are, our personalities, our character, and still walk in the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit. God chooses us individually for our you know, personalities and for the way we interact with other people because it gives him opportunities to minister to people that he would otherwise not have that opportunity. But the truth is, we are more than all of these things combined. We are all that we have need of, all that anyone could ever have need of has already been pos possessed by us, amen, through our born-again experience, amen. So he says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power. Listen to that. Everybody that's been born again receives some power now. And that power was to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. Praise the Lord. Being born again, you become a new creation. Amen. A child of God. And that means a new identity. And we need to intentionally begin living as the person God has already created us to be. Amen. Now again, I'm not talking about being spooky and weird the way sometimes it's happened in the past. But I'm talking about walking in the knowledge of the truth where there is no fear, where there's no anxiety. When you're faced with the issues of life, you are the overcomer. Amen. They're not overcoming you. You overcome them and you do it by the power of the word. Amen. The word of your testimony and the blood of the lamb. Praise the Lord. So praise God. Now I realize that uh, this reality that I'm talking about is not always apparent. And that's because it's hidden in these clay vessels, these jars, amen, these human bodies, praise the Lord. And uh, it's easy to get distracted by the physical, amen, and not see yourself for who you really are, amen. Who you are is what God has said you are, if you can believe. All things are possible, praise the Lord. Now, I realize, again... It's hard because we see ourselves in the natural here, focusing and functioning in this world. But that's not your true identity. That's just, that's just your vessel. That's just the thing that, you, that gives you access into this world. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so look at, let's look at this in, in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 48. Praise the Lord. Matthew 5 and verse 48. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
I'm talking to people that have power. I mean, unlimited power in God. But you have to believe. Because it's what's deepest down inside of you that will be, produce, amen, your future. Amen. What you want, amen, in life is by the Word of God. And you have an inheritance that tells us that we have everything in here that He has spoken. But we've got to believe it. We have to live our life in that reality. Amen. And so be ye therefore perfect, He says, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Now, I've kind of messed with your mind a little bit, right? Be ye perfect. We're talking about being flawed, right? Not being perfect, having imperfections, having issues. But this is talking about our spirit man. Amen? And so, be ye perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Well, God is a spirit, right? So, he's, here's what he's telling. That word perfect here is literally translated to be complete or to be mature. Amen? So, it's like he's saying, like father, like son. Like father, like daughter, right? You have spiritual power. You have the ability, amen, to turn things around when they're going crosswise and upside down and backwards, amen. We can line things back up with the Word of God because we are children of God, amen. We were created in His image. And all that happens by learning more and more to believe His Word and thereby trust Him. Praise the Lord. It's a decision that we make, all right? Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Philippians 1 and 6. And it says, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it unto or until the day of Jesus Christ. God started this work. You get, you get drawn by the Holy Spirit. You didn't just come and get saved because you wanted to get saved. The Holy Spirit draws you. No man comes to God except by the Spirit. So he draws us to him. We accept Christ. That's, that's the beginning of this good work. Now, the work is finished. The problem is we have to develop that understanding and that reality in our lives or else we don't get to experience it. We just get the experience of dying and going to heaven. But God, that isn't why, that isn't the only reason God saved us. God saved us to be His family here in the earth so that He can have impact and influence in the earth today. That's why we're here, praise the Lord. So if we're not going to operate as children of God, we're kind of wasting time. We're just taking up space and doing nothing more than what the world out there who don't have the option. Praise the Lord. And so being confident of this very thing, He which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And so again, the Holy Spirit is given to lead us and to guide us into all truth or into full maturity. Then you say, praise the Lord. This is what he's trying to lead us and guide us in to the truth of who we really are. Amen? Not your flesh, not what you see in the mirror, but who you really are in Christ. Amen? Praise the Lord. Mature. To be mature is to be perfect, is to be like Christ. Amen? So let's look at this in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13, real quick. Ephesians 4 and 13. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now remember, God is saying you're perfect. God is saying you have all power given unto you. Amen? Now, that's not any different than what he said to Joshua. It's no different than what he said to Gideon or, or, or to Esther. He's setting us up. He's trying to get us to believe big. Because there's a big challenge ahead of us, amen, in all of life. Not just this immediate situation we're dealing with, but life is a challenge, amen. And God's trying to get us to understand we're bigger than any challenge if we will believe our identity in Him. Praise the Lord. So till we all come in the unity of the faith, the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, here's that mature man, into the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's what God says is mature. That's what is perfect is when we come in to that stature of the fullness of Christ. You say, yeah, but that was Jesus. Listen, if it couldn't be done, he wouldn't be saying it. He wouldn't be telling us. This is a spiritual endeavor. This is a spiritual action that we can, if we couldn't do it, he wouldn't tell us to do it. If he didn't believe, if God didn't know that, that Joshua could defeat their enemies, he wouldn't have said, be strong and of good courage because you're going to take the land. If he didn't believe that Gideon was a mighty man of valor, he wouldn't have told him, come out from hiding in that wine press, you mighty man. You're going to take this enemy. You're going to drive him off. If, if he didn't believe, amen, in the power and the influence, amen, that Esther could have, he wouldn't have told her, check out the king. Amen. Because there's a whole people that need to be set free here. Praise the Lord. And Esther was just the woman for the job. Be what? Not, because, not just because she was beautiful. Her beauty was something that was inherited. Amen? 
And if you think about it, Gideon's courage was something he inherited from God's Word, what God told him. Joshua, what, what gave him this, this uh, mighty man, this, this idea of power and, and uh, victorious uh, in battle, was because God said it. It's because God was declaring his true identity. But they all had to believe it. They all had to believe it and act on it. Praise the Lord. So our circumstances, you know, our challenges expose the maturity that we walk in. And it's not God testing us. It's just that crap happens. And that's what exposes either our maturity or our lack of maturity. Amen. Praise the Lord. And it's to help us then to see ourselves as we're supposed to be so that we can do what he... The, the situation with, for, with Joshua, for example. Moses is going to die. And he, he's not going to take him in the promised land. Somehow, this has to translate into uh, thinking for uh, Joshua that I can do this. I can do something that nobody else has done. Why? Because God said I can. But I have to believe it and I have to act on it. Amen? So, w we have to realize that uh, this is about exposing our level of maturity, amen, and it's to move us to, a, to believe more and to speak more, amen, to, to the more you believe, the more you'll speak, the more you speak, the more you'll experience maturity. Praise the Lord. So the maturity is the full stature of Jesus Christ, which is laying hands on the sick. Amen. Speak into things that are not as though they are. That's what he's telling us. We have this potential. That's our identity. That's who we're supposed to be. That's how we're supposed to be living. Praise the Lord. John 16 and verse 33. Praise the Lord. This is not to, you know, criticize. I'm just saying for everybody, all of us, we need, there needs to be a shift in the way that we're thinking. Because if there's not a shift in the way we're thinking, there won't be a shift in the way we're speaking. And if there's not a, way, a shift in the way we're speaking, there won't be a shift in our experience. Praise the Lord. So these things I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world, you're going to have tribulation. All right? So here's what he's saying. In the spirit, there's peace. Peace that passes understanding. If you're going to be in the flesh, you're going to find tribulation everywhere. Praise the Lord. You're going to have to shift, amen, your frame of reference from the natural to the spirit. From what you believe is going to happen in the natural to what God says is going to happen in the spirit. Praise the Lord. Amen. He says, but be of good cheer because you're in me. I have overcome the world. He's already given us the victory. We talked about it. By his stripes, he became poor. Uh, you know, he, he, he lost his God so that we could be a part of it. All of those things were to set us up for this reality. All right? So now let's look at 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 and 5. So this time it's 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 and 5. Praise the Lord. See, you know, God cannot lie. It's impossible for God to lie. And uh, just like God is love. He doesn't love. He just is love. Right? So I think about uh, Psalms 91. Remember when Mary, um, the Holy Spirit moved over, and it says it hovered over her, and she became pregnant. Right? He gave her a promise, and she said, as you have spoken, so be it unto me. In other words, just what you said, that's the way I'm going to believe. That's what I'm going to accept. And it says the Spirit uh, shattered her, or over her, came over her, and she conceived the promise, right? Now think about Psalms 91. He says, under the shadow of the Almighty, if we shelter there, in other words, later on in that same chapter, it says, uh, because I have uh, made God my habitation, right? In other words, he's hovering over us, waiting for this miraculous to take place. How does it take place? Because we believe. When we believe, he lets us, it's like a hen over her brood. You know, she kind of keeps them around until they're strong enough and big enough to fend for themselves. And then she lets them go. You know, it's kind of like the, the idea of we'll mount up with wings as eagles. We'll run and not be weary. Walk and not faint. Amen. Praise the Lord. So for whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? And so that's what he's saying. Whosoever is born of God, that would be us, say praise the Lord, that's me. They overcome the world. And this, here's the victory. Who is he that overcometh the world 
but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. So he says, who, who is it that's overcoming the world? You, if you're a believer, right? You're the one that's overcoming. We're not waiting on something to come out of, the, out of space or somewhere from the you know, planet out past Mars somewhere. It's already here. It's in us. Amen? It just has to be manifest. And this also, as I said, it speaks to the character of God. He is full of grace and truth. If God said that, it's got to be the truth. It's just a question of us acting on it and believing it to the point where we will truly step out in faith. Amen? The Greek word for grace is charis, uh, which also means blessing, favor, and gift. Now, one of the characteristics of God is that He bestows blessings, extends favor, amen, and gives gifts to His children, right? Christ is the mediator through whom they come. It's how we receive them, amen? And the, and the Word of God is Jesus, right? So that's how we receive these gifts. That's how we receive these promises is by the Word of God. Amen? Look at Ephesians 4, uh, verses 6 and 8. Or 6 through 8, excuse me. Ephesians 4, 6 through 8. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Amen? But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore, he saith... Now, let me just back up for a second. Unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Every one of us gives, is receiving grace according to the sacrifice of Jesus. Everybody's getting the same amount. It isn't he, somebody gets a bunch and somebody gets a little. No, we're all getting it based on what Jesus sacrificed. The same measure, full measure, amen, of grace. Wherefore, he says... When he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts unto men. Praise the Lord. God gives gifts. That's what he does. Amen. All of the, all, you talk about the gifts of the Spirit, you know, uh, financial blessings. All the, he, that's what God does. He gives us gifts. Praise the Lord. Amen. And God is full of truth. Praise the Lord. Now, let me just talk about a couple of things real quick here. God is truth. You could say it's, they're inseparable, right? So, objectively, this means that God is the core reality that lies under everything that exists. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. I mean, objectively, God is the core reality that lies under everything that exists, both physical and spiritual, both visible and invisible. There's nothing outside of God. There's nothing that God doesn't know about or isn't, isn't able to act upon. Amen? Look at, quickly at Hebrews 1, uh, verses 1 through 3. So objectively, God is involved in everything. Now, He's not the author of all this confusion and everything, but He is involved, amen, by overcoming it. Right? By, we use his, his authority, His Word, amen, our faith in that to overcome whatever the enemy brings against us. So God, who at sundry times and in divers' manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, has said in these last days, spoken or has spoken in these last days unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So subjectively, it means that God is free of any or all pretense, falsehood, or deceit. Praise the Lord. God is utterly, perfectly, totally trustworthy. Now, James described the God of grace and truth this way in James 1, verse 17. James 1, verse 17. Every good and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Every good gift, every perfect gift comes from God, the God who never changes. Amen? The God who, whatever he said yesterday, he's still saying it today. Whatever he has declared in the past, whether it was Gideon or, or Esther or Joshua or Abraham or anybody else, he's still saying it today. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we're talking of our inheritance here and our identity. Exercising gifts. Discovering who we really are and then living out that God life.
Praise the Lord. This isn't about how good can you be. It isn't how many rules can you keep. It's identifying with your heavenly Father through Jesus Christ so that you can be the child or the offspring or like father, like son, like father, like daughter. Amen? Praise God. Living out that God life. So there's a time, I, I believe this, because we've all experienced it in, in little bits and pieces over time. And, and here's what the deal is. There's a time and a place in faith where we become one with our true nature. Whenever there's a breakthrough, whenever we have a breakthrough, that's what's happening. We have collected or connected, amen, with our identity, with who we and what we really are, amen. And we, that, that's our true nature, our true spirit identity. Amen. Where we get in sync with the Spirit and nothing shall be impossible to you. But it takes intentional thinking. Amen. It doesn't just happen, you know, you just don't trip over it. You have to make up your mind. I'm going to believe what he has said and I'm going to walk in this truth. Praise the Lord. Now, most Christians, people in general, can't see the likeness of God in themselves. And it's because, as Suzanne was saying up here, I heard her talking uh, as she was worshiping. Because they look through natural eyes. She's saying, open our eyes, Lord. Open our ears, right? That's the Holy Spirit speaking because they're looking through natural eyes and listening with natural ears and they cannot see their true identity. Nor they can they hear God's declaration of power and authority that is in their life. Amen? Instead of looking into the Word of God, the perfect law of liberty, amen, instead of listening to, what, or listening to that, instead of listening to what the Spirit is saying to the church, that we are overcomers by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. You have to make a choice, praise the Lord. John 6 and verse 63. John 6, 63. Praise God. I mean, I'm telling you, I believe all of this, the enemy meant for evil, and God's going to turn it for good. He, the church is going to rise up. I'm not saying everybody who's a Christian or born again, but the church is going to rise up, amen, in power and authority. They're going to recognize the power and authority that God has given them, and, and, and they're going to start walking in it, start experiencing it. Not, again, not bizarre and weird, but just believing God. And then when, the, when a crisis comes or a situation or a confrontation, we have authority. We can take authority. We don't have to freak out. We just take the authority over it. Amen? We're not, gonna have, we're not having our families sick and dying. I'm not accepting that. I'm not going to put up with, I'm not going to put up with poverty and, and financial uh, breakdowns for people. No, I'm, I pray for this church along with my immediate family and my wife and I every morning. And I confess the same stuff over you that I'm confessing over me. Amen. And I believe it has an impact. I believe it has an effect because it's forcing me to think in ways that are outside of my natural way of thinking. It forces me to think of the potential and possibilities that are available to us if we'll think big, if we'll believe in a God who is greater than any circumstance or situation. Amen? So it's the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you, their spirit. And their life, that is powerful. That's one of the most powerful scriptures that I've ever read. Amen? I think we miss that. There is spirit life in the words that we speak if we speak in agreement with God. Hallelujah. Words carry spiritual uh, force. Amen? Words transmit fear or words transmit faith. Praise the Lord. Out of the abundance of the heart. Amen? Words transmit your image to other people. Words also transmit faith images to people. I, it happens to me all the time in church. I'll listen, Suzanne's leading worship, or, or we're just having conversation before the church, and the Lord's dropped something on me. Or when we were all coming together here, and we'd have testimonies back and forth. That's, what it's, that's what's happening, amen? There is spirit life in God's Word, amen? There is an inheritance, amen? An inheritance as I live. I receive this, this inheritance, this spirit life. Amen. It's the truth. And all his word, all of this word is my inheritance. As I live and move and have my being in him. As I shelter under the wings of the Almighty. As I make him my habitation. Praise the Lord. Let me just tell you a little, this is a kind of a weird story, but it caught my attention. It's a true story, but it's about a professor, a professor that was teaching philosophy of the mind. And he was talking about a study that they did with bees. And this certain kind of bee would go gather pollen, 
and then it would bring it back and it would set it down and then it would go look inside the hive where it was to take the pollen and only then would it come back out, get the pollen and take it into the hive, right? So the study was conducted to learn what would happen if someone moved the pollen while the bee was checking things out inside. So right, here's, the, here's how it works. The bee's buzzing around, he finds the flowers, he's getting pollen, he comes back to the hive, but he doesn't take the pollen into the hive, he lays it down somewhere outside the hive, then he goes into the hive and he checks it out, where can I put it? He comes back out, gets the pollen, takes it in and puts it where he decided it should go, right? So here's the deal. They did this study and they were trying to find out what would happen if somebody moved the pollen while the bee was checking things out inside? Now, I know this sounds crazy, but this is philosophy, and that's how weird it gets. But it's the philosophy of the mind, right? How it works, how it functions, how it, how it interacts with things, right? So what happened was surprising. The bee would come back out and rearrange the pollen, and then he would go back through the same steps all over again. So the bee would come. He'd pick up his pollen. He lays it outside the hive. He goes inside, looks around to see where he should put it. comes, but they moved it. He comes back out. He doesn't just pick it up now and take it in and put it where he thought it was, should be. He goes through the whole process again. He goes back inside the hive. He looks around, sees where he could put the, the, the pollen. He comes back out, and if it's been moved, he goes back into the hive, and he checks it out again and sees what's, where it should, could go. He comes back out. He just keeps recycling this thing over and over. Every time that pollen was moved from its original position that he had put it in, he would go back and go through the same process all over again without ever accomplishing anything except just going back and checking, going back and checking, going back and checking. Amen? So the bee, he, he's got this, look, he, he'd look inside the hive, he'd come back out, find that the pollen was moved, and then he'd cycle through the steps all over again. Frustrating, right? I mean, almost, it's bizarre, right? But the study was interesting from a philo philosophy of the mind standpoint because it spoke to the difference between a pure, purely mechanistic animal and one with free will. Amen? Or consciousness. Praise the Lord. The bee could not transcend the change in its routine life or the deviation from its expectations. I hope you're with me here, praise the Lord, because this just blew my mind. Amen. If we live outside of God's word of truth, of who we are and what we have, amen, we become like that bee. Amen. We become like that bee, and we can't break out of the program pattern. Praise the Lord. We become hyper-focused on external issues, on the natural outside evidence and physical goings on, and so have, so, so have you. Amen. Till we can't let go. And then we cycle back to our mental tapes and our arguments about why it can't work for me because I'm this or I'm that or I haven't arrived. And that's what God was doing with Joshua and Gideon and Esther and all of us. Zoom out, he's saying. Consider the big picture. Imagine what's possible with God. See, the whole context and be able to engage human consciousness and free will with our spiritual reality. Amen. This truth in order to move forward despite whatever the current circumstances might be. See, the devil wants us cycling back every single time, never getting to the, to the end of the purpose that we have, but always going, oh, this is, that doesn't look right, and, and try to fix it and do all No, he's saying just take the pollen and put it in the hive. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Quit overthinking this. Just be smart and trust what God has said. If God give you the pollen, man, get it in the hive. There's honey to be reaped from this. Amen? There's blessing. We're going into a land that is filled with honey. Amen? Milk and honey. Praise the Lord. And we're not going to get it by buzzing around outside the hive wondering why this isn't working. Praise the Lord. Amen? Self-deception. Hallelujah. See, this... Self-deception, it, it has two related opposites. And both are essential to us becoming mature. Us becoming everything that God has made us to be. Praise the Lord. Let's read one more scripture here. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Praise God. We're not going to go through life in this mechanical natural physical thing of just doing and responding to situations and reacting to situations and so forth. No, we're, we're supposed to be dominating. We're supposed to be in charge and in control. Hallelujah. 
and the devil keeps moving the pollen and we keep going back, cycling back through the same old stuff. Well, you know, you're only human and you got these issues and you know you had that issue last week and you had that argument and you, didn't, and you shouldn't have said that. And you, all, all the crap that the devil wants to throw on us. Amen. It's just moving the pollen. That's all he's doing is screwing with you. Amen. So you never get to your destination. Amen. You never fulfill the purpose that God has for you. Amen. So be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. What is that? The mature world. Us growing up being who we are and what we're supposed to be. So what's God's will? Well, it's, it's simple. It's to live out our true identity. Amen. Christ in us. Authority over every work of the enemy. One with the word of God. Living by faith in the finished work of the cross. Believing no matter how difficult, no matter how big, no matter how unlikely, that we are more than able because we are what God has said we are. Amen. We are who God says we are. Instead of cycling back to what is seen, what is natural, what is in the sense realm, we walk in the spirit. Amen. We walk in the spirit of truth. You know, it's said, to dare is to lose one's footing momentarily. Not to dare is to lose oneself. Our true self only comes by being daring, only by stepping out of the boat, only by believing in what God has said, in spite of what the circumstances look like. We'll wrap with these last two scriptures where we started, 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 16. Praise the Lord. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17. Hallelujah. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You already are. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. God bless you all. You are so much more. Don't believe the lies of the enemy. Don't keep hovering around the outside of the hive. Grab that pollen and let's go to the bank. Praise the Lord. Let's get it into the hive. Let's get the honey. Hallelujah. Let's take the land. Praise God. It's our promise. And God cannot lie. If he said it, it will come to pass if we'll believe it and act on it. God bless all of you. Have a great week in the Lord. We look forward to being together again next week. Stay blessed in Jesus' name.